Artificial intelligence is going to change everything and it's going to have a massive impact on your life. Now in the short term, it's going to be used more and more as you're learning new content and revising for exams. And longer term, it's going to have a big impact on the kind of job you do and the role that you're going to be doing day to day. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can use AI for revision, maybe some of the limitations and also some solutions other people have come up with. So first of all, I'm gonna be using ChatGPT. Uh, it's been around for a while, it's like the big thing that everybody talks about. And I think that this can be really useful, maybe if there's something you're unfamiliar about, and maybe um, you maybe don't have the chance to go and ask a teacher about it, you can just initially put your question in here. So for example, maybe you've been doing stuff with electrical circuits at A-level, uh, there's some laws, um, Kirchhoff's laws. So first of all, we can just ask, uh, what are Kirchhoff's laws? Okay, um, I think I've spelt Kirchhoff correctly. So these are laws to do with electrical circuits and the way that current and potential difference in EMF um, are in those circuits. So what uh, ChatGPT says is that they were introduced by uh, this German physicist in the mid 19th century. Nice bit of history there. Uh, we've got Kirchhoff's current law, KCL. Uh, the sum of the currents entering or leaving a node or junction in the circuit is zero. Yeah, perfect. There's nothing wrong with that physics. And they've got Kirchhoff's voltage law, KVL, they say it here. Um, I suppose that's slightly different to the way that we tend to teach it in schools. We tend to talk about Kirchhoff's first law and Kirchhoff's second law. Um, but the good thing here is that you can maybe ask questions of what it's just produced. So it's talking here about voltages, but we tend to use EMF and potential difference. So um, again, using the knowledge I've gained from uh, well, being a teacher, but also the kind of things that you might learn in lesson. If you're not sure, you can just ask it and interrogate it a bit more. So I'm just going to ask, what is the difference between EMF and PD? So this starts out by saying that EMF and PD are both measures of electrical energy. I wouldn't say that's a great bit of physics there, but it does then say that EMF is a measure of the energy per unit of electrical charge that is supplied by the source of electrical energy. Um, I guess that's OK. And then it talks about PD being about the energy per unit of electrical charge expended as the electric charge moves between two points in the circuit. Again, I think that's, um, that's not a bad description. I guess the difficulty with AI is that it's probably about 95% correct. And that means most of the time, what it tells you is gonna be true. So you're gonna start trusting it. The difficulty is there are gonna be things that aren't quite as they should be. So for example, uh, you might ask about um, what is the structure of the GCSE trilogy physics exams. Um, so if you kind of start to kind of go into that level of detail, it's not always as accurate as you think it should be. So let's see what uh, the AI says. And what it says is that the GCSE trilogy physics exams consist of two papers. Yep, that's true. Each lasting one hour and 45 minutes. That is not true. Trilogy, they are one hour 15. It's only if you're doing separate physics that they're one hour 45. Um, the exams are set by AQA and are worth 70 marks each. Well, that's true if we're talking about trilogy. Um, the exam papers are split into two sections. Section A is multiple choice, and that's worth 50% in section B. Um, consists of open-ended questions that assess a candidate's ability to explain, analyse and evaluate scientific ideas. I don't think that's really true. There's not really this kind of section A and then section B is just open-ended questions. So I don't think that's true. It also says, and again, you see, this is where AI is kind of 90% correct. The exam covers these topics. So energy, electricity, particle model of matter, atomic structure, forces, waves, magnetism, electromagnetism. That is correct for trilogy. But then it says space physics but that's only assessed if you're doing the triple science. So I would say that the danger of relying on AI is that not all the information it gives is correct. I would say that's about kind of 80% correct, but you don't know which 80% it is. Of course, if you want to find out exactly about the structure of your exams, go and have a look at the specification, and that's going to give you what the exam boards say. However, there are other people using AI and often using kind of chat GPT at the back end to try and make learning more effective for students. For example, the Khan Academy have got this thing called Khan Migo, which is going to be released soon to like a big audience. And that's going to act a bit like a one to one tutor. There's also uh, things that Seneca recently have just put out there. Now, I think Seneca is brilliant. Um, I've met the people there before quite a few times, actually, uh, and this was several years ago. I used it with my own classes, um, and I've always been really impressed about the kind of way they have um, lots of questions, lots of quizzes. Now, something that Seneca have introduced quite recently, and this is something that uh, they provided for me to have a look at, 
is Amelia. So Amelia is basically your Seneca trained chatbot uh, using artificial intelligence and I, th I guess I think chat GPT at the back end. And also they're using that with the information which you need to know about for your exams. Um, so let's ask this personal tutor something about, um, again, let's do physics, it says on the t-shirt. So um, what was the gold leaf experiment? So it says here, uh, and often this is called the alpha particle scattering experiment. The gold leaf experiment was an experiment conducted by Ernest Rutherford, bombarded a thin gold foil with alpha particles, um, led to the discovery of the nucleus and the fact that atoms are mostly empty space. Do you need more information about this topic? Uh, okay, so, so why was gold used? Why not some other material? Gold was used because it's a very thin, malleable material. It can be hammered into very thin sheets called gold leaf. Yeah, um, also it's relatively inert, meaning it does not react easily with other substances which make it a good choice for the experiment. So who else worked with them on the experiment? Uh, we've got uh, Hans Geiger, Ernst Marsden. Um, there we go. So that one there is all good information. This is like your standard GCSE staple information. Um, and then you can just keep asking it questions. So what model of the atom did they develop? Uh, hopefully it's gonna say the nuclear model or maybe the Bohr model later on. Um, let's see what it says. Yeah, here we go. So it does say, uh, based on the results, Rutherford proposed the nuclear model of the atom. That's correct. Um, atom consists of a small, dense, positively charged nucleus at the centre. Um, yeah, all of this is absolutely brilliant and perfect for GCSE. Um, the other thing you can do is you can use it to give you some examples. So, for example, let's say, uh, can you give me an example of an isotope? Um, again, I don't know what it's going to do. This is actually the first time I've been inputting this particular set of prompts into this. So hopefully um, it might say carbon, that's kind of like your standard one. There we go, carbon-14, it's an isotope. Um, carbon-14 is radioactive and used in radioactive carbon dating to determine the age of organic materials. Um, and of course you can keep that chat going if there's anything you want to find out more about. What other isotopes should I know about? Hydrogen, uh, uranium-235, carbon-12, oxygen-18, yeah, all that good stuff. Something else I found that is actually quite useful when you use AI is maybe you have an exam question. All I've done with this one is copy and pasted it from a, an exam paper, give the PD and frequency of the mains electricity supply in the UK. Now I've just left it like it is. Um, and all, all I wanna see is uh, what the answer is. Yeah, 230 volts and the frequency is 50 Hertz. Now, of course, the real advantage of AI isn't just giving those answers. You can find those in the mark scheme. The advantage is that if you ask it to explain why it's those answers, it can actually kind of give you a bit more information than the mark scheme would ever have. So why do we use 230 volts? Well, it tells you here in the massive paragraph, why do we use 50 hertz? Why don't we have a higher or a lower frequency? Again, it gives you information there that goes well beyond the mark scheme, and that can really allow you to have a deeper understanding of that part of the subject. So yeah, Seneca, Amelia, I think actually I've been quite impressed. It's not perfect, but of course it's only gonna get better as time goes on. So AI, it's here to stay, it's not going anywhere. It's something that can be very, very powerful if you know how to use it and you spend a bit of time learning the prompts. But I would say, as a bit of a word of caution, if there's really important information, for example, what's coming up in your exam, how many marks are available, what's the structure of the paper, don't rely on AI, instead, Go and have a look at the specification and if you are really not sure ask your teachers that's what their job is to do to help explain things when ai can't quite do that anyway if you found anything useful in this video uh, don't forget you can of course like and subscribe on youtube as everybody else says on youtube um, but also i've got some websites where i can explain anything you need without the need of ai at the moment about a level and gcse physics Again, there's links beneath this video. Head over there if there's anything that you're not quite sure about and you just want to feel a little bit more confident going into your final set of exams. So AI is here to stay, it's not going anywhere, but I think there are gonna be some really, really interesting developments, especially in education over the coming years.